All right, Coach Pendleton, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we're just talking about, let's talk heat index. It's not that bad right It's now. It's not that bad not right that now, bad. but little, heat's little, heat. A little sticky. Can little, we agree that heat's heat? Heat's heat. Okay, because there's, there's, hey, there's Tempe it's heat. It's better than the snow. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll give you that. I hate the snow. Yeah. Okay. But, like, uh, you talk about it, you're out there showing technique, right? You're out just having a lift, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, 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 you're crazy active. That's awesome. I was like, yeah, this guy's done wrestling. He's not, you're lifting. You're out there trying to get your huge on. We got some young guys that are, I don't, if I let it go, they're going to start kicking my butt. And I'm not like losing to Zahid because he will talk about it for months and months and months. So he just won't shut up about it. You got to stand your game. Zahid doesn't shut up. Really? He does not shut up. Seems like a quiet kid. <laughs> yeah. No? No. All right. Stay, keep it up with the young bucks. Yeah. What was it like out there working out with the humidity, June, Georgia, humidity and heat? What was it like? It's awesome. You know, every time we get to come out here, it's a different feel. Um, I like getting a little hot and sweaty. It helps with knees and ankles get a little loosened up. And the kids are just great. They're actually out there just listening, paying attention, and soaking it all in. As you're recruiting and you're looking for athletes, student athletes, uh, you know, what would you say the main things are that you guys at Arizona State are looking for? You, know, you come from the Oklahoma State system, but you know it's usually based off in those one in those two systems. It's usually really talented guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Better athletes. Yeah. Is that something where you guys are looking for these ultra athletes? What's the mold of a guy you're looking for? Is there a mold? Um, there's not really a mold. It's um, at Arizona State, and um, our number one thing is we're looking for kids that are looking to win world and Olympic medals. Even though we're an Olympic sport <laughs> that trains and competes in a non-Olympic sport style, we still want those kids with those goals and aspirations. I think when you look at our past, our last couple of years recruiting classes, everybody's heavily involved in freestyle and are year-round um, athletes. On the student side, you know, we, we're recruiting the student athletes. We're recruiting kids that are going to have the right GPAs, have the right uh, lifestyle goals, and, you know, that's pretty much what we're looking for. Looking at the camps, the camp system when you guys do camps, you know, and you go probably do camps all over the country, but this is very unique. The the C three, the compound, yeah. college combine, it's it's a different feel altogether. And you get to watch the student athletes. You get to teach them technique. You don't really interact with them too much as far as personal, because there's rules or whatever. But looking at how they run this, is this something where this gives you an even better view of what the kids are like? I guess. You know, one of the things that I love about this is it gives the kids a chance to be proactive in their recruiting. Um, I think especially for there's different tiers of level, you know, stars, but however you want to do. Let's just use football as an example. There's four-star, three-star, two-star athletes that when you're a two-star athlete, it's a little bit harder for coaches to find them. You know, and we're always looking for those diamond and rough kind of kids where when they come to a camp like this and they actually are interactive, um, using my experience, I wasn't recruited very heavily at all, but I went to the Oklahoma State camps and I remember, you know, asking John, hey, can I work with you after a session on a low single? And him like, ah, how about I get one of the counselors to help you out? The counselor is Mark Munoz, but then I spent time with Mark Munoz and then I got to know uh, Mark Branch and Pat Smith. And my senior year, I was at the Reno Tournament of Champions and I walked by John and he kind of like, was like, hey, kid from camp. How's your year going? And we started talking, and then I won the tournament, and, you know, boom, I, right away I got a letter and a phone call from Oklahoma State. So it's a good way to interact with, for recruits to interact with coaches. I think that um, it's definitely where wrestling is going to be shifting towards, I, I think. Um, you know, the other sports like basketball and football, these are, these are the norm. They do this. The Manning Academy, the, you know, Gatorade, the Nike Elite for basketball. I mean, all the other sports are doing it. We're just getting caught up to them. You know, looking at coming from the Central Valley, which is a strong wrestling, you know, it, it, it's good wrestling tradition. There's five, no five question. nine or the 209, Nate Diaz. It, it's an excellent, yeah. Stock, used to Stockton, be, California. Funny story. Lamar, Tell him, I want to hear Lamar it. used to be 209, my hometown. Um, you know, all these guys would get the 209 tattooed on the chest. And when I was in high school, they switched it to the 559. Really? Yeah, so you got all these So what they, what they did, they get them fixed? I didn't ask because some of them were scary dudes. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I messed with some of those guys either. Nah, and you, I, Isaiah's from your high school, Isaiah Martinez. Yep, that, 
Yeah. But you were the I'm first. From, I'm, I'm from Isaiah Martinez's hometown now. No, you're both, but you're no, both two time NCAA Jamil, champs, right? That's how Jamil Kelly put it. He really? Goes, yeah, he goes, Congratulations, you're from Isaiah's hometown now. It's like, yes. Being a below the radar guy in high school, though, and then you get to come here and potentially give a kid an, an opportunity to, to prove themselves to you. What's that mean to you as a college coach? It means the world. I mean, you know, we're not. You know, we're not trying to chase down NFL, you know, professional careers. Um, very few kids w are going to make that transition to the next level for international, make the Olympic team, all that. Um, to give these kids an opportunity to get their degree and to compete at that next level and just to be a part of a, of a good program, it's tons. Speaking of diamonds in the rough, this guy, this guy, this 133, Nader, right? You're, he's your 133? Is he your 133? Uh, right now... I can't discuss prospective uh, student-athletes. Oh, okay. Can't, so, so, so you guys got some, a team coming in next year? Yes. We got, 174. We 174, 184. Let's talk about that. Ah. Million-dollar question. Where will we see the Valencias drop? Where are they going to be? Can you discuss that? Um, I'm not going to discuss that right now because there's still a lot of things up in the air. Um, I, honestly, Zahid's number one thing is he's chasing down an Iranian right now that – made him look a little silly and he's very determined to chase that guy down. How do you do that? Hmm? How do you do that? How do you chase a guy down? Yeah, where do you go? Mm -hmm. He gotta go right hand? Oh no, he's gonna we're gonna find that guy in France. Yeah. In the world Championships. You're gonna have to beat the defending world champion probably to win a world title. Um, right now his uh, his plan is I think we're gonna go to Spain and get ready for that. Plug in with the senior level. He's already at the World Cup with those guys right now. Um, we're going to plug in with the senior level and the junior team for training camps, uh, bring a bunch of our guys up there, try to help those kids, you know, get where they want to be, and then France, try to win a world title. Sunkiss Kids Club, one of the best clubs in the country. The best. The, the best? Yes. Okay, Ohio, Ohio RTC, Mini Line, they would have something to say about that Hawkeye? Well, they're all different. Those, a lot of those guys are, uh, the RTCs are different than the clubs. Okay. You know. So you guys are the best club? In my opinion, they've been around for that long. Um, the World Olympic medals are coming through them. Um, I'm just really fortunate to be a part of that organization, the class, the people involved. I mean, they've been around for 40 years for a reason. I mean, I've, I've seen wrestling clubs come and go and a lot of great people being involved in the sport. Art's still here after 40 years. And he will continue to be here because he does things the right way. Can Nishan be an Olympic and world champion? Nishan can do whatever he wants to do. He's a great human being, great story. I'm really excited about being able to be a part of his journey. Um, we got to teach him how to drive a little bit better right now. <laughs> but we're really excited to have him out here. He just moved in last week, so he's getting settled into his apartment. He went to L.A. He's going to meet up with those guys at the World Cup. Um, I don't think he's going to wrestle in the World Cup. I believe he's not. Because, um, you know, graduating from an Ivy League school like Cornell and moving across country is a lot for a young guy to take on and be able to compete at a high level. So we're excited. We're excited, you know. Uh, we had a great group of guys in um, the last quad that did some amazing things. Um, we're still waiting to see how that all shakes out. I know Ed's made the transition to MMA, and he's going to be a world champion someday in that. Um, now we're getting the next group of guys in. Anthony Valencia. This guy's a world beater. He's he, a world beater. He took an Olympic red shirt this year. Mm -hmm. Not, Not any player. other time. It was an Olympic red shirt. Mm -hmm. He was third on the team. He was actually a team member in 2015. Yes. This year, he, it seemed like, you know, I don't know what happened in his Olympic year. I don't know his story. Um, you know, I can tell you what happened in his, his Olympic year. He wrestled some grown men that are really good. Um, a guy like Tyler Caldwell is a university world champion. <laughs> world champion. He beat him one match, then lost him the next match. You know, was it tough? Yeah, I mean, he wants to beat everybody that he wrestles. Is he losing to people that he shouldn't lose to? I don't know. I mean, he's wrestling the best. You know, the 74 weight class in the United States, when you really look at the junior, the university, and Olympic level, I've never seen anything like it. It's amazing. 
and he's right there, you know, he's uh, competing with, you know, I can't really talk about other juniors, but I mean, he's competing with the be uh, some of the best kids in the world, kids that I think are going to bring home medals. And I'm excited about his future. Um, he's a little dinged up right now, so he's shut down kind of at, at home in Bosco, um, just recovering, relaxing, and I'm excited for him for next year. If there's one thing you want people to know about what you guys are doing at Arizona State, what is it? Building a program and trying to win a national title. One thing to know about, um, you know, we're trying to do something unique. Um, I was fortunate enough to be at a program that had 34 national titles. Um, I've seen all the top programs in the country. Um, I want to do be a part of something that is hasn't been done in since 1988. Uh, it was the last time somebody's won a uh, NCAA title west of Oklahoma. You know, there's a lot of great wrestling out west. It's time to start building the power out there and getting somebody else outside the traditional people to win a NCAA title.